Welcome back to the third segment of Sex, Brains, and Money on October 26, 2012. We are back with Leonardo Ferraro, who was one of the very first guests that we had. And this is going to be a segment that we're hoping to do fairly regularly called This Is Your Brain on Sex. So Leon and I were talking yesterday about a really interesting sex difference that some researchers have found between men and women in terms of what happens in the brain during sex and specifically during orgasm. Leo, thanks for joining us. Uh, right. Tell us a little bit about that. For sure. Um, so I'm always interested when I can find something uh, neurologically, a neurologically based sex difference mm -hmm. between men and women because, um, well, you know, we talk about men and women being different, but then sometimes when you look under the hood, things aren't so different. Mm -hmm. um, in any event, this one's interesting to me. Uh, there is a, a marked difference in, in what's going on chemically in the brain, depending on whether you're a guy or a girl, uh, during orgasm. Uh, so in common, uh, the, uh, the, the neuro cocktail, as it were, <laughs> that we're enjoying uh, during an orgasm would be dopamine. Mm -hmm. And uh, dopamine is the, the drug that, uh, or the, the chemical that uh, cocaine releases in the brain, is that uh, right? It's, yeah, it's, uh, most people think of dopamine as sort of like the reward chemical. Mm -hmm. I'm not it, it, close enough for a <laughs> the purposes of our conversation here, mm -hmm. right? It's like the, I really want to be doing this part of it, right? Then uh, if, if, if the dope means that I want to be doing this, then there's a the serotonin, which is sort of the nice relaxing chaser afterwards, mm, right? The happy it, ending. Exactly. Bingo. Perfect. Uh, and then, of course, uh, everyone's heard of oxytocin, mm -hmm. right? And it's been in the news a lot, whatever. Mm -hmm. And oxytocin, we can think of as the cuddle chemical, right? The cuddle chemical. I right. like that. That sounds really nice. And that's, uh, that's, what's replace the, that's what opioids replace in the brain. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Okay. Uh, uh, maternal hugs mm -hmm. uh, are a big source of, the of oxytocin. The warm and fuzzy drug, right? Exactly, exactly, right? And these three um, we have in common, mm -hmm. all right? Males and females, men and women boys and girls, mm -hmm. uh, at, uh, during orgasm. These are all secreted, right? Uh, but there's one apparently that appears to be, while women do have this in their systems and it functions in it, during orgasm, it seems to be that men secrete this. And mm -hmm. This is called vasopressin. Which vasopressin? Is, yes, which seems to be the least sexy name for, yes, <laughs> for a no, chemical ever. It doesn't ever. sound nearly as intriguing as the others. No, no, no. And, 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 and vasopressin, of course, has the lovely prosaic function of, of regulating your salt and water. Oh, okay. <laughs> Among other things. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, um, we've heard about vasopressin in that regard, right, in kidney function. Uh, we, we hear about it actually recently in terms of being what's called a nootropic. So it may be related to memory in some ways, hmm. which I think we'll come back to in a minute because I think there's a, there's a, there's a point to that. Um, but what's happening, what's, what's interesting is there's a study, 2008, um, really interesting. It's just, it's the only one I've found. I'm digging, I'm mm -hmm. digging here, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, it turns out uh, that vasopressin is... Uh, implicated in the male pair bonding experience. Hmm. Explain uh, that for us. Right. Well, uh, I, I think pair bonding is interesting. I call it the caveman chemical. <laughs> the caveman chemical. Okay. okay. Uh, it, vasopressin is the thing that makes you want to smack open another guy's head with a rock if he looks at your lady. Oh, okay. <laughs> kind of a thing. So the uh, out with the boys on, you know, having a bunch of drinks at the bar kind of chemical. Yes. No, it's <laughs> like, this is, this is, it's the possessiveness side. Mm, All right. Okay. So it's interesting because oxytocin is thought to be sort of the mutual into each other thing, mm -hmm. but it's less so. That's more just, like I said, the warm and fuzzies from, from shared affection, right? The vasopressin appears to trigger, trigger a response in males uh, that is possessive and sort of like, you know, mine, mm -hmm. right? Which I think is interesting because it brings to light a, a couple of issues in, in the research here that we see. Um, one is the interesting way in which sexual norms uh, propagate themselves through research. So this paper uh, is ostensibly a neuroscience paper. Okay, so you've got a bunch of uh, a bunch of, of brain dudes who are interested in, in 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 all this really cool stuff we're seeing in voles and rats mm -hmm. to do with vasopressin. And they went, okay, does this translate into human beings? Mm -hmm. Right, and they do tests, they do stuff, they do whatever. Uh, without ever questioning certain basic assumptions, which I find really interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, they talk about pair bonding. Right, and they talk about how uh, vasopressin is linked to a sense of closeness, mm -hmm. right, to, to, to the depth of connection. Um, and I think it's interesting that they, they choose a monogamous paradigm as as the default mm -hmm. for this, right? Um, they um, the levels of vasopressin uh, in males, in particular, is it what's called a genetic polymorphism, which is a fancy way of saying some people works for some people, doesn't for others. Mm -hmm. The men for which vasopressin is less effective, uh, apparently, their partners report. Uh, lower feelings of closeness. 
Interesting. Right? It, less sense of connection, lower sense of marital status and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Less wanted, as it were, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the men for whom it does work or who are sensitive to it, uh, the, there's, a, there's a, a more a report uh, from, the, from the, the spouses of feeling wanted, you know, close, all of that stuff. Hmm. Interesting. Um, well, I wonder if that suggests that maybe our assumptions about human monogamy, which I don't think are necessarily founded in truth when you look at the ridiculous divorce rate and the yes. fact that people don't stay together with their high school sweethearts nearly as much as you'd expect. I, I wonder if this research has sort of been skewed by the assumptions that the researchers might have about human pair bonding and how it works and how long it lasts. Well, this is, this is what I find interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, look, historically, uh, we, we rely a lot on animal research before we get to human research for, for good reason, mm -hmm. right? Um, but it's interesting. I mean, we used to think of, of let's say, we, we called man the rational animal, mm -hmm. right? And that's what distinguishes us from the common beast. And then, well, I don't know, like dolphins, chimps, parrots, you know, language use, tool use, problem solving. Maybe we're not just the only rational animals, but it strikes me that man is definitely the kinky animal. <laughs> definitely. All right? uh, I mean, human beings are the only animals I know that dress up as other animals for the sexual gratification of their peers. <laughs> So. <laughs> yes, and I'm sure there might be a couple of you know furry fans who are watching well, who there we go. enjoy what they do. And, and that's awesome, right? <laughs> like I said, I mean, I haven't like, I, my dog's pretty frisky, right? I haven't mm -hmm. seen him like you know dress up in anything slinky, right? So, uh, <laughs> he just hasn't had the opportunity yet. This is possible. Well, he's or got that really butch harness, right? Who knows what he's harness, up to when right? you're not there? Exactly, well, sleeping, I think. <laughs> but um, anyhow. Um, our sexuality appears to, to, to carry a whole lot uh, a whole lot more than just, let's say, primitive or basic biology. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a sense in which it's all rooted in biology. Mm -hmm. But when people talk about something being biological, right, they're really speaking about something being sort of forced or determined or sort of like the, what they call hardwired. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that actually as human beings, we're much more flexible than that. Mm -hmm. And I think that our, the way we behave around each other sexually um, is one of the most basic, most primal, but also one of the most complicated aspects of human behavior, Definitely. right? It's primal in the sense that it, it seems to be a, a basic need mm -hmm. that, that connects everyone, yeah. right? But then the way in which we express ourselves, the way in which we share this, the way we, 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 we communicate this with each other is incredibly varied. Mm -hmm. Now, specifically, sorry, okay. <laughs> when it comes to this notion of a pair bond and monogamy, I question the assumptions here that somehow a relationship is stronger mm -hmm. if there's more of a caveman response. And I'm saying this as I'm pretty sure I'm like like caveman plus, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I tend to Not be standing your five o'clock shadow. Exactly of <laughs> right. Nobody at five o'clock. I shaved this morning, fresh. I promise. <laughs> um, no, I mean I, I I I'm I think a fairly well. I'm a, I'm a monogamous fellow and I'm a possessive person. Like not in a crazy sort of you know fatal attraction sort of a way, but mm -hmm. like you know I'm. Um, that being said, if you consider, for example, polyamorous couples or groups, or, or, or um, I guess a couple, see, my own sexual normativity mm -hmm. at work, if you take uh, polyamorous groups, okay, um, it, would, it seems to me that a depth of connection is at least as important there, if not more so, mm -hmm. all right? There's something actually kind of easy about monogamy in the sense of, okay, no, no, you're mine. All right, and I've got one thing to track, <laughs> and it's there, <laughs> mm -hmm. and it's, it's less complicated. Whereas um, you know, only one other person's needs to, to satisfy, only one other psychology to accommodate, mm -hmm. right? When you're, when you're polyamorous, that's a much more complicated, much more complex set of relationships to manage. Mm -hmm. And depth of connection strikes me as, as a really important factor there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know. I mean, it's, it, it's cool. I, I, as usual, when it comes to, to neurochemicals, we want a, an easy story, right? Like I said before, we talk about dopamine. Oh, dopamine's the reward chemical. Well, no, the story's not that simple, right? Never is. Never is. Um, so I think that we're really looking at too simple of a story here with vasopressin, mm -hmm. right? In, 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 in looking at it as the, as the pair bond machi machinery, I think that would be pres presupposing the existence of an innate pair bonding thing mm -hmm. in the brain, which I really don't think is there. Attachment, yes. Connection, yes. Mm -hmm. Possessiveness, even, yes. Caveman, certainly, right? Pair bonding, I'm not so sure that's the right way to look at it. Great. Well, you know what? That, that's really interesting, and I think that uh, a lot of the research that's going on in 
anything to do with human connections is always based on those stereotypes about what connections are supposed to be and then that sort of informs the research and I think we need to break out of that and just start looking at things more objectively without that assumption in there. So Leo I'm going to thank you very much for, for sure. appearing on the show today and I'm looking forward to having you on again to talk more about This Is Your Brain on Sex. So we're going to take a break and in two minutes we're coming back with the very sexy escort Cleopatra who's going to talk to us a little bit, a little bit about her life and her job. Stay tuned. <laughs>